Ready for a little meat on the bones? I call this a full meal deal episode. I've got a question for you. How does nature display meditation? How does nature tell us about levitation and trans relocation? Have I got a story for you? How did I learn to experience these supernatural phenomena? Oh, so easy. The love of God. I am absolutely no different than you. The only thing that is super spiritual here is the religious spirit that has been trying to deny us the movement of the spirit or blinding us from the benefits of the gospel and blissful wonderment our love for him includes. Yep, I tell you what it feels like and how Jesus continually teaches me about being in him. You will learn three powerful considerations of wisdom that govern my belief system. One more question for the curious at heart. How does it pertain to my practical life? We are seated in heavenly places, right? Called to rule and reign as kings, priests, and sons of the Most High God, correct? When you start to experience His love in this way, Will you feel empowered and supercharged against sickness, disease, lack, struggle, problems? You are darn tootin' right. There isn't a cup of tea that God would rather pour than building you up, enjoying you, enjoying Him. How vast are the sum of His thoughts? Huge! I'll see you on the inside. Hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from KristenWombach.com and you're listening to Intentional Now Podcast. Answer me this. How does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ? The love of God. If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Join me and my guest on a mystical journey. But before we talk about the spiritual woo-woo, you need to know I am totally sold out to Jesus. It's amazing what the love of God reveals. Hello and welcome. How are you doing on this wonderful summer day? Yep, it's summer here in the Pacific Northwest. The sun is shining. The trees are green and bright. What about your neck of the woods? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's breathe in. Breathe out. Yep. This is our special time together that Holy Spirit has arranged for us. Yippee! Welcome if you're a brand new listener. We have a really deep and fun and practical episode to share with you today. How vast are the sum of your thoughts? Think about that. How vast are the sum of God's thoughts? And we are going to sandwich that right in together and talk about meditation, levitation, and trans relocation. Mm-hmm. I told you those were deep subjects. Yeah, it's really going to be good. I am so excited to share with you. I changed up my format just a little bit. So bear with me here, okay? (laughs) I'm trying to be less scripted and more off the cuff. Just kind of having a nice blend that sounds more like a very spontaneous conversation with you. So there's this moment when we ascend and we step into the vast sum 
of his thoughts. When this happened, my thoughts are expanded. We step through the veil, through Jesus Christ, the door. In our ascended position, our thoughts just go. They're just expanded. And then infinite possibilities begin to flow. And the miraculous thing is how God brings understanding to spiritual things. I always get so touched the way that he gives me an aha moment with words. Creation always confirms the movement of the spirit, the exchange of light and energy. Humbled, here I am a student, having a conversation with my rabbi and following so closely behind. You know, at times I feel my body ascend and I feel the sensation of it being lifted up. And one might think to fear or put on the brakes. But your practice time in him, my practice time in him, has taught me to lean in, to trust, to rest in the ecstatic, in the bliss of the moment. And then his words are captured and they just cocoon me in this place of rest where I'm okay in him. I learned something this week, which is how we came to today's episode, the vast sum of his thoughts. And my graphic is that of a picture of wind blowing a dandelion and the seeds just get caught and they they flow but I had this experience this week over the course of seasons I have written down several experiences of what my body feels like when the energy of it or the light. It's a little bit difficult to explain. When I feel it ascend or lift up or remember on the TV series Star Trek when they used to get in, it's not the replicator where they did the food. It's the place where they always said, Scotty, beam me up. And you know, you could actually see the particles of their body um, disintegrate and all of a sudden they'd be relocated on some planet somewhere. That's, That's a great picture for me to explain what I feel is been happening in my body over a period of time. And that was just so on the Lord's heart this week. He says, I want you to talk about this. I want you to open up the mystical and try to make it as practical love language as possible. I had a moment this week where I was in my prayer closet, ascended prayer closet, we're stepped in, I'm meditating, and I've dropped my earth suit, and my spirit is in the vastness of him, and I'm feeling the space. Actually, I'm trying to feel the width and breadth and depth of his love. And that weightiness, that place, well, I caught myself and, oh, how do I explain it? Momentarily, it felt like I was dizzy, but I wasn't. And what happened is I realized, I go, oh, I've just checked out right there. Did you catch that, Lord? I, 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 I did. I stepped into another dimension and I know my 
body was there because I felt it leaving. And in that, when I caught, I did catch myself, he's been preparing me over a period of time to experience this in many different ways. And so when it happened, I, I, I thought about it and I, I said, Lord, I go, what, what was that? Explain that to me. And all of a sudden, I remembered whenever I visit the Midwest, the East Coast, I remembered fireflies. How all of a sudden from the bogs and from the wet, moist lagoons, and all of a sudden, just at the point of the silhouette of the evening, all of a sudden you'd see these fireflies, the coolest things, and they just start to blink and they'd blink and they'd be there amongst the reeds and the moss and the plants. And so I went, oh, Okay, that's what it feels like. It feels like the light, like the blinking. And when they blink the next time, they move. So this is creation teaching me about what is happening as my body experiences leaving this place here, this dimension and traveling to another place in this same di dimension. I'm going to talk more about it, okay? But when I started to research fireflies, ah, God just confirmed himself. I love it. <laughs> so it talks about adult fireflies. They use their glow as a love song of light see why it touched my heart. Their glow is actually a mating call to other fireflies. And I went, oh, that's why it felt that way. So let's talk about meditation here for a moment. So meditation, it's a devotion exercise or leading to contemplation. So if you were to look it up, you would find 101 verses that use the word meditate or meditation. Uh huh. The first one that I found was in Genesis 24, 63. And it's when Isaac is getting ready to marry Rebecca. And the scripture says, one evening as he was walking and meditating in the fields, he looked up and he saw the camels coming. We remember the story. That's when Rebecca was coming. And so that particular word is to muse pensively, is to think about it. So the scripture I believe would be that we would be most familiar with is in Joshua 1.8 when God is commissioning Joshua. This book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to observe and do everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. I knew you'd be familiar with that one. So the firefly glow actually comes from an abdominal I can see that word, abdominal organ called the lantern. And inside that organ, oxygen interacts with a small energy-packed molecule called luciferin. Mm -hmm. Some sciences, scientists believe fireflies create their pulsating patterns by regulating the flow of air. Let me say that again. Some scientists believe that fireflies regulate the pulsating patterns of their glow, their blinking, by regulating the flow of air. Now I got your listing right. So when we meditate and when we breathe in and we breathe out, I went, oh, those 
are the same, God. Those are the same. It's like that love song of light. Yes, yes, more I'm learning. So God talks to me in this way. And when I have those indescribable moments, he brings creation around and says, see, this is similar to that. And when he does that, it helps me to relax in it and experience his limitless and those really crazy mystical encounters. It just helps me relax and to understand. I love it. (laughs) There are three considerations that I ask myself on this journey of meditation, levitation, and trans relocation. Mm-hmm. Just these are considerations. These are spiritual wisdoms that I have learned over 25, 30 years of saying, yes, Jesus. <laughs> That's why I like my saying that says, Hence my question, if you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Amen? Absolutely. So he's constantly showing me himself as truth. So these considerations that I ask myself. Number one, value the set of kingdom keys. Your set of those kingdom keys. When you value that God has given you keys that open doors, opens portals, opens life for you and those that you carry in your heart. So one of the things that you do with this value of those keys is before I take anything out on a test drive, I will hand that particular key to my father, just like a teenager who's learning to drive. And it plays out this way. I just drop the key in his hand and say, show me how this works. Show me the application and the purposes in my life. And I find myself... I'm a student and I'm watching. I feel so confident when I say, okay, Jesus, how does this work? You'll get a a spiritual gift. You'll encounter something. And I immediately turn around and say, "Mm, would you show me this? How does this work? And he does. So I am a student of watching him. And he was a student of doing whatever he saw the father doing. Number two is focus, focus, yes. So when you chew on your communion, you break it down and you open up all the nutrients that it provides. What does that look like for me? Let me use Philippians 4, 8 from the mirror. It just really unpacks it. Now let this be your conclusive reasoning. There's the chewing. Consider that which is true about everyone as evidence in Christ. Live overwhelmed by God's opinion of you. Acquaint yourself with the revelation of righteousness and realize God's likeness in you. Right there, I'm going to say that again. Live overwhelmed by God's opinion of you. When you live and you're overwhelmed that God lives inside of you, it's like you can go play in the playground or the carnival and you know that he's going to teach you, show you, amaze you, love on you because you're overwhelmed because he tells you that he thinks you're pretty cool. So acquaint yourself with the revelation of righteousness. Realize God's likeness in you. Make it your business to declare mankind's redemption and innocent. Yes, open your mouth and declare mankind's redeemed, 
innocence. It's done. Grace has done the work. Think friendship. Discover how famous everyone is in the light of the gospel. Mankind is in God's limelight. Ponder how elevated you are in Christ. Study stories that celebrate life. When spiritual occurrences happen, when we're learning and we're growing, we can't always explain what has transpired. But that's when Holy Spirit comes in and says, let me teach you. And all of a sudden, nature starts to replicate what you are feeling, perceiving, and sensing. And then all of a sudden, he brings you these answers from the most interesting places. You're researching, you're chewing on the nutrients that are provided for you in the communion of your relationship. So the most important attribute I can give you and share with you is the habit of writing it down, journaling. I know I'm a bit of a broken record here, drawing it, making it a record of a conversation. When you make it a record in a conversation, then that information begins to build in your heart and your library of experiences, and you become a wealth, a source of of confidence, and your faith just continues to grow and build. It does. Let me give you some statistics here. Science has proven time and time again that your retention levels increase 30% when you take notes. And get this, up to 90% if you turn around and clarify what you just learned, heard, or experienced, meaning talk back to God about what you both just witnessed. That means you are starting to clarify between him and you, and it remains in your understanding. Mm -hmm. Vividly describe your goals in written form is strongly associated with goal success. And people who vividly describe or picture their goals are anywhere from 1.2 to 1.4 times more likely to be successful and accomplish the goals than the people who do not. Number three, this is huge. Believe what you have been shown. Mm -hmm. When you're beginning and you're practicing and you're sending, I used to always say, Jesus, this is what I saw. And he'd nod his head and go, "Uh uh-huh. And I'd feel that affirmation and confirmation in my spirit. Over time, I don't do that quite so much. But if it's something really new and really mystically out there, I'll say, oh, um, Jesus, this was what I shot. I saw. I'm on the right path, right? And he'd go, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. That is how you learn. But believe what he shows you. The Didn't you just love the firefly story? If you have fireflies in your neck of the wood, do me a favor. Go sit out amongst them and meditate on him, okay? Imagine a love song in light. Ah! Think about it. They control the pattern of their blinking light on and off with oxygen. Oh, my goodness. Hey, and what did you think about the three considerations? Value your set of kingdom keys and ask Father to show you how they work. Focus. Chew on your communion of relationship, what you encounter. And remember the third one, believe what you have been shown. Believe what Jesus shows you. I have a challenge for you this week. I know, I know, I made it a two-part episode. So during your meditation time, apply the three considerations with what you encounter. Value, focus, believe. 
I guarantee you will see growth, and I look forward to what you bring to the table next week when we discuss. We're going to discuss logic and reasoning. Nothing stands a chance when we put our testimonies together. Amen? Hey, head over to the show notes for bountiful goodies. And don't forget to read page 18 in the unfinished book because I believe everybody has a mount of transfiguration experience. I love you lots. I will see you next week. Bye now.